Okay, sorry, sorry, I, I was not audible, right? So, just, yeah. Am I audible now? Can you just confirm? All of you? Yes, sir. You should have told me, right? Sometimes it happens. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. So don't worry. Whatever I have discussed till now, don't worry. I will, I will just repeat from the first one. Okay. See, what I was talking is that the points which we have discussed in the last session. So we started with, we started with the basic thing. What is, what is data? This is the point which we have discussed. First of all, once we discuss data, then we have seen what we mean by data is, right? So as has uh, the first point which is mentioned in your syllabus, basic definition. So we talked about data. We have seen that data is a uh, raw material, just a raw material. Database is what? Database is a collection of related data. The term related is very, very important. Right. After that, we talked about DBMS, database management system, which is nothing but a software. Right. And then we talked about something called as RDBMS, that is a relational database management system. So relation in RDBMS stands for table. Right. Relation in database terminology always means table. So always remember that. So RDBMS is nothing but relational data. Uh, it's a DBMS which gives you tabular data because relation in data terminology always means table. Once we discuss about RDBMS, uh, after that we, we talked about different types of data. Right. So here, as I earlier mentioned, right, we talked about these types of data. What is structured data we have seen? The data which can be uh, represented in the form of rows and columns. That is tabular data, is nothing but structured data. Then we talked about something called as semi-structured data. Now, what is semi-structured data? So, same XML database is the best example of semi-structured data. That's what we have seen in the last session. So, uh, where you have code as well as data, right? That was XML database is the best example of semi-structured data. That's what we have seen in the last session. And I and you have shown you right. We use tag in HTML code, XML code, and then we represent the data. After that, we have seen something called as unstructured data. So structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data, and one more thing is quasi-structured data. Q A S S. So quasi-structured data also we have seen. So so quasi-structured data is, is what clickstream data is the best example of quasi-structured data. For example, if you go uh, and open Google, and if you try to search for something. For example, if you search for Uniponi, you will get multiple results, right? So out of all those results, if you click on some, uh, for example, first result, again, the contents and the address are going to change, right? So every time you click on new link, the contents of the address are going to change. So that data which is being generated in the address bar, right? That is nothing but the example of process structured data. And unstructured data is like email, audio, video, SMS, email, uh, maybe Facebook data, Twitter data, YouTube data, or any social media data for that matter. Sensor data, all, all these are all the examples of unstructured data. That's what we have seen. After that, what we have discussed, once we discuss types of data, even we talk about a term called as big data. Right? So as you can see, if you talk about current scenario, <coughs> most of the data which is being generated is unstructured data. It does not mean that structured data is not all important. Yes, it, it is important. But if you talk about governance in you, maximum in maximum cases you will see the data which is being generated is unstructured data. So we talked about big data which revolves, the definition of which revolves around five weeks, volume, velocity, variety, varsity, and energy. This is what we have seen. And I have even explained you what is the meaning of all those weeks, five weeks. After that, we talked about <coughs> Uh, we talked about definitions of machine learning, right? Deep learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. If you people remember, we have seen one Venn diagram with the help of which we, we try to understand the difference between all these terms, right? So, and once that is done, we talked about types of machine learning. So, there are different, different types of machine learning approaches like supervised learning. So, in case of supervised learning, always remember the data is always labeled the data. That means you are aware about the input as well as the output, right? You know what is going to be the input and what is going to be the output. That is supervised learning. See, after that, we talk about something called as semi-supervised learning. What is semi-supervised learning? 
any supervisor having approach is like your data is sometimes labeled and sometimes it is not labeled see if some of you are not uh, if you if some of you are some confusion about label data and unlabeled data do not worry right now i will be showing you the practical implementation of uh, the uh, models where we will be we will be making use of labeled as well as unlabeled data so do not worry if you if you are not clear here okay supervisor me that means you are aware about input as well as output semi supervisor me it means that sometimes you are aware about the input sometimes you are aware about the output but sometimes not one more type of uh, so my type of machine learning approach is so unsupervised learning so in case of unsupervised learning we are not aware about input as well as the output what type of output i am going to get i am not aware right and in case in this case the data is always unlabeled data right and one more type is there uh, that is nothing but reinforcement learning so robotics or driverless cars are the best examples of reinforcement learning this is what we have seen till okay and whatever i have discussed in the last session right those those were present in the last session i came to know that you people are aware about basics of python right i came to know that you people are already aware about this and then i talked about these things numpy pandas right numpy these are the packages numpy pandas then there is something called as matplotlib these are the packages which we are going to need to implement different different algorithms and to, to create the models predictive models classification models right and then the packet called as cbot so the, i told you that everyone should be aware about details of these packages right so some of you said that okay you are aware about that but not sure and i, I came to know that many of you uh, do not know about this so what i am doing is first of all i will be covering these packages right i will show you how to make it up of uh, all these packages and uh, then how to make it up these packages to create the models because see whether it's a numpy pandas matplotlib or c form each one of these packages we are going to need to implement algorithms like linear regression decision tree then logistic regression support vector machine then you have neural networks also in this case also we are going to need these packages in case of clustering you have k means algorithm you have hierarchical clustering so for implementing all these algorithms you going to need these packages that's why i will just go so what am i going to do is first of all i will cover these packages i will complete those packages and we will try to solve some exercise some questions based on that and once that is done then i will directly go and try i will show you the implementation of linear regression first of all i will explain you the theory part of linear regression and then i will implement linear regression and here we will try to create one project kind of a thing one application kind of a thing and that application i will show you how to deploy that particular application on cloud i hope you you have heard about a word called as cloud cloud right if if something is on a cloud that means everyone in the world will be able to make use of your product that's what i am going to show you now uh, maybe after after this package so i will complete these four packages first in theory or linear regression implementation of linear regression and one application we will develop with the help of linear regression and once that is done then i will go and i will try to complete this this topics from the first one okay this is what i am going to do just, just try to understand this is this is the uh, way i am going to follow okay so now to start with let me let me let me start with numpy okay so uh, and and one more thing i hope you people have received uh, today i have sent one link in the group uh, with the help of which you can go and download uh, basic basic pattern in in that uh, so it's actually a zip file you need to unzip that file once you unzip you will get three files which are saved with dot ipy in the extension you just need to open those files in this thing in uh, anaconda right so as i have opened this jupyter notebook you need to make it a jupyter notebook and open this ipy in the files that's a that's all related, related to the basics of python but the exercise which i have given there is really good those people who are interested just solve that exercise let me know if you face any question at any time just the same your questions and your doubt 
and even I have I have given the solutions to the questions which are mentioned in the exercise. Okay, so that will be really good for you people uh, if you are if you are interested uh, to solve the questions. Right? Today only I am saying one link. We just go and download that particular file whenever you want. Okay. So to start with, now I will I will directly start with this numpy. Uh, see, I will be sending all the notes one by one. As and when I will complete the topic, I will be sending you the notes. So you can check here. NumPy notes are divided into uh, this many number of items and define. So NumPy array, NumPy index mean selection, NumPy operations, and then exercise and its solution. All these things we will be getting. Don't worry. That's why you don't have to write down anything. Okay. But try to understand how everything actually works. How how all these packages are actually useful. Uh, and how are how are they going to help us? So let me go and open this particular file. I hope everyone has Anaconda installed, right? And as you people say that you are already aware about Python, right? So I hope you have you know you have idea about uh, what is Jupyter. It's a notebook, okay? and how to make use of that, how to run the code. I think uh, I have shown you few examples in the last session itself, right? Okay, so let me just create some space here and and see one more thing. Whatever the notes I will share, do not make any change in your notes. Whatever you want to practice for that, what you do is you just go and try to open new notebook. For example, go here, open a new notebook like this. Okay. This is what you can do. So do not make any change because uh, the notes which I have shared are in proper sequence. So definitely it will help you whenever you want to revise something. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try to talk about NumPy. Now what is NumPy and why it is useful? So NumPy is actually a library which is available in Python and in simple words if I want to tell you what, why, why we use NumPy, we use NumPy to convert anything into array. Now why? Why to convert anything into array? Why it is necessary to convert any Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope I am audible. There was uh, there was a power cut actually. That's why it is disconnected. Just a minute. Let me share the screen once again. Okay. So yes, uh, I hope I am audible to all of you. Okay. So let me let me start with NumPy and uh, let me tell you how to make use of this. So here I have opened a new notebook. Now how to import NumPy? So the command to import NumPy is import NumPy. This is the name of the package. As See, as we people are making use of Anaconda's Python, so you might be knowing that there are some packages which are by default installed in both of them. Right. So, as, as you can see that, I am directly firing this particular command, import NumPy then, because I know that NumPy is already installed in my case. If, for example, if NumPy is not there, just for your knowledge, you suppose NumPy is not there, or for that matter, if any package is not there, how to install any package in case of uh, Python, in case of uh, Anaconda, you need, to, you need to have this command. Pip install and name of the package. So in my case, the name of the package is NumPy. Right? So this is the command. But yes, this thing is already done in my case, and that's why there is no need to do that. So I will directly go and run this. So once it is imported, uh, there will be a number which we will be able to see here. For example, you can see that. It has run successfully. Right? That's why I'm able to see. One. We can also install in uh, Jupyter notebook itself. No? Yes, 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 yes. You can do that. What is command for that? See, you you can make use of pip install command only. Pip install command only. But see, if you go here, see what what's going to happen is, as we are making use of Conda, so you can install 
Kunda name of the package. Okay. Kunda install name of the package. Or if I do something like this, if we install numpy and then file. Why? Why I told you that you should go to Anaconda Pro? Because what Anaconda has done is they have given that particular black screen to install the packages from there only. Right? Because there is something called as environment which you always get with. So if you people remember, I think I talked about environment. See, it is, it is showing the environment on the side. The same command you can make is make it up here also. Is it clear? Someone asked me that can you install from yes, sir. Yeah, but but always prefer installing a new package from Anaconda from that is this black screen. Why? Because there are some packages which you might not be able to install from this one. Always remember. In see, as, as you are able to see the Jupyter node. So it's a graphics, right? It's a GUI, graphical user interface. So graphical user interface itself is a program. And as it's a program, obviously it will require some time to load. But as compared to that, if you see this black screen, Anaconda Pro or something like Command Pro, it's, it's actually a program, but it's, uh, uh, what we can say, it takes negligible space as compared to GUI. And that's why whatever the command you are going to fire from here, that command is not going to take much time. That's why this is always okay? that, that That is the way, I, that is the reason why I have to do Anaconda Pro. Always do installing of any package from there itself. Okay, let's go to NumPy. Let's see. Mm, let's see what is this and why we actually need it. <laughs> so as I told you that NumPy basically is used to convert anything into array. Now the question is why to convert it, anything into array. For example, you know what is list, what is a dictionary, right? You know what is tuple, you know what is uh, set. So you know what is string. So these data types and data structures is a part of the basics of Python. Now why to convert anything into array? Basic reason is array works faster as compared to other data structures. Okay, and one more point is that as we are talking about NumPy, most of the methods in NumPy are actually are, are written actually on top of C and C++ language. See, let me tell you a fact that if you want to compare Python kind of a language, see, this, this is a basic point why Python or why uh, NumPy. If you compare Python with C or C++ kind of a language, which one is faster? So C, C++ is faster as compared to Python. But the thing is that most of the libraries in Python are basically are written on top of C or C++. And NumPy is one of them. Okay, and that's why NumPy arrays are faster. And that is the reason why we make use of NumPy arrays. Right? Why Python? Because Python has inbuilt methods. Obviously, whatever, suppose you want to do something with uh, C, C++, you want to write on some application with C, C++, and same application with Python if you want to write on. Obviously, number of lines of code in case of Python will be less as compared to C, C++. But if I want to compare which one is faster, obviously this one is faster. So what has happened in case of Python is, in case of Python, you have some packages, which, which, which you have ready-made packages, you can, which actually can do a lot of things. And those as and most of the packages are written in C or C++. So it saves your time of writing down those. That is one thing why Python is actually used. And again, uh, domain. We talk about any domain, Python can be. Right? Anyway, <clears throat> I just wanted to tell you why why NumPy is. So let us let us go and let us start with this and let us see how which are the methods which are possible uh, with the help of NumPy. So as you can see here. If you, if you check, NumPy is a linear algebra library for Python. Now, <clears throat> they are saying that it's a library. Okay, it's a linear algebra library. As I said, NumPy can be used to convert anything into that. Yes, that's the basic purpose. Okay. But here you can check. Uh, guys, am I not audible? Someone is uh, sending me a message. Am I not audible? Can you just confirm? Uh, yes, sir. I'm yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so the, the people who are sending the text, the text message, I think I am audible. Okay, so just maybe you can check on your uh, your side, please. Sir, it was for previous one. Okay, okay, no problem. 
but yes people what has happened is actually on on, uh, on this side there is a power cut so i am not connected to uh, wifi which i generally make you know i am connected from hotspot from the mobile phone right now maybe if you get some problem let me know that part. okay anyway i hope somebody will tell so you can see <clears throat> the reason it is so important for data science with python is that almost all the libraries in py data ecosystem rely on numpy see later on we will be talking about libraries like pandas numpy matplotlib and for machine learning the the most important library which we will be making use of is scikit-learn scikit-learn is a library which is available in python in which you will see almost all the algorithm that are available so you talk about linear regression you talk about logistic regression and new base uh, k means algorithm uh, k nearest neighbor you talk about any algorithm that is available in packet language and as you can see that most of the libraries in py data ecosystem rely on numpy and that's why numpy is very very important package so it's a basic package but it is very very important and many times it is uh, it is a building block you can say okay so numpy is incredibly fast why it is fast because it is written in c c++ right as it has binding to c libraries and i already told you that in terms of fastness c c++ uh, c or c++ is faster as compared to python kind of language python the r kind of language right so if you so here what i have done is i have given you one link if you if you really want to go and uh, read about some practical scenarios you just click on this link it's a stack uh, stack overflow link actually where one person has data, uh, has shared his experience so i just clicked on that link and you'll be able to see uh is uh, whatever he has uh, mentioned right later on whenever we have a time just go to this just uh, paragraph you can see two three paragraphs only. so you will come to know that why why numpy happens so that's the reason again why we use numpy this is the command to install numpy conda install numpy as we are using anaconda or you can do it uh, do the same thing with pip install numpy so whatever is required everything is given in all these notes that's why i said that you don't have to write down anything Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is the command to import any package. So, import is a keyword. NumPy is the name of the package. As is a keyword, and np is a alize. What do you mean by alize? Alize is nothing but see. I am not going to repeat these things in uh, later part. That's why each and everything I am trying to talk about. So, this is a keyword. Even if I would have hired the command like this, import NumPy, that's also. Okay. But import numpy as np so this np is nothing but alize it is called as alize or we can say it's another name for this particular keyword for this particular package so and generally uh, it's a standard practice that we use np for numpy you can even use your name also suppose your name is sachin so you can use import numpy as sachin yes, that's possible it is just alize another name okay so remember that particular now let's try to talk about numpy arrays okay i will directly start with numpy arrays so whenever we say numpy arrays right so there are two things which are going to come in picture <clears throat> this this thing array specifically when we talk about array right so there is something called as vector you people are, might be aware about vectors and there is something called as matrix right so always remember vector is nothing but what it's a one dimensional array as simple as that remember vector is a one dimensional array and matrix is a two dimensional array remember this both the things i will be showing you how they look like in the no file so vector is a one dimensional array matrix is a two dimensional array now uh, let me do something like this so see uh, what is this double hash it's in basic python you might have, you might be knowing about it this, this double hash is nothing but comment so numpy array i am going to start with and uh, just to tell you just for your kind information <clears throat> see whenever we use this hash it is nothing but comment but if you want to create some nodes right if you want to create proper nodes so you can say uh, you will find out that this repeater kind of a thing is really good for documentation also here this code option if i go on if i try to select mark out now you will see that the size is increased let me run now see you will be able to see something like this if i want to decrease the size of that i can go and i can do double hash and then once again run 
So see, we have different size. Dash dash dash, and we will see that the size is different, right? <clears throat> so this is nothing but you can do it with the help of mark out option. Right? Now, what I will do is I will create list, and I will show you how to convert that list into numpy, and then I will discuss about a practical uh, example. Real time example where one can make use of numpy. So, for example, you, you people might be knowing about how to create a list. Suppose let me create a list. So, <clears throat> what do we do to create a list? We use square brackets. Lists are always enclosed in square brackets. For example, if I write down something like this: one comma two comma two comma four comma five comma six, something like this. So, this is a list, right? This is a list. So, if I go here and if I run it, right? My list is created. So let me go and let me show you my underscore list and shift enter. Now you'll be able to see that it's a list. If you want to check, is it a list? So we have a command called as type, right? So go and try to check what is this. So see, it is showing me that it's a list type of a data structure. Now as we are talking about NumPy, array, I want to tell you how to convert list into array. So for that, what we do is, you know that how we imported NumPy. We have written a command called as import numpy as np. That means we are going to refer to numpy package with the help of this particular keyword that is np. Np ready, I can say. So what I can do is np dot. See what I am doing? Np dot, and I will press tab button on the keyboard. Once I press tab button, it should show me all the methods which are available in numpy, and that's why there is nothing to remember in case of Python. You don't have to remember anything. Everything is given in As a help itself. Uh, suppose now, what I want to do is I want to convert this list. I want to convert this my list into array. So for that, we have a command. We have a method called as array. So np dot array. Suppose if you want to understand what type of arguments np dot array takes as an input, what you can do is just go here, put your cursor on this, and press Shift tab. Once you press Shift tab, you will be able to see something called as docs page. Docsing is like a help available for any method. So you just go click on this plus sign, and you'll be able to see the complete help regarding that array method with with some examples. In it. See, like this. each and everything you will get. That's why I said you don't have to remember anything. Okay. So each and every help is also available. So np dot array. Now, I want to convert this my list into array. So what you need to do is just just pass that my list as input. So The name is my underscore list. So np dot array my underscore list and shift enter. That is the run. Now you'll be able to see that this is the array. So earlier it was a list. It was enclosed in square bracket. Now it is shown like this. See, it is shown like this. Let me just connect to my power and check if it's starting now. Okay, it will come. So I hope you people have understood. This is how we convert everything into array. Now, what you need to know here, you need to know some points here. See, this is an example of one-dimensional array. I told you, one-dimensional array is also called as vector. How to identify whether it's a one-D array or two-D array? See, always remember. Later on, you might be having some confusion. See, always remember, one-dimensional array or vectors. Always start with one square bracket and end with one square. This is how. See, it's not a hard and fast rule. This is what uh, the observation. From the observation, I can tell. Whatever the thing which is starting with one square bracket and ending with one square bracket, it's a one D array. This is how you can. Because later on, what will happen is sometimes there will be two D array, but you will feel that it's a one D array. That's why remember this thing. Whatever I am telling you, remember that. Whatever which is starting with one D, uh, one square bracket and ending with one square bracket, that's a one D A. This is a vector, right? Now suppose I, I I want to store this vector into variable. Suppose my underscore array. So my underscore array is equal to this one, right? So my underscore array, now my, my underscore array looks like this. So this is how you can convert this array. If you want to check what is this, go here and try to type. Type command, and then you will be able to see that it's n d r n dimensional. In this case, it's one d r one dimensional vector. So this is how, in simple words, you can convert list into array. Right. 
So this was the list, my underscore list, and my underscore array is our app. Now, if I want to tell you a practical application or any example where arrays can be used, so let me tell you what happens actually. Uh, suppose let's take an example of an application like uh, maybe object detection. Let's take an example of application like object detection. You want to create an application uh, to which you are going to pass image as an input. Suppose, suppose this is the image. Okay, so this is the image, and in this image there is a car. Right, there is a, there is a car image. There is a bus. Uh, then there are people. Something like this. Okay, different different. So in this image there are different different pictures. Now, as your problem statement is to detect the image, right, to detect some object. So suppose the problem statement is to check whether car car's image is there or not. Whether whether the car is present in the image or not. You want to check that. So obviously to to do that kind of a thing, first of all you need to store this data somewhere. It means you need to store this data onto your hard disk. Now, how it is going to be stored? So it is going to be stored in the form of an array, right? And as it's a whether it's a colored image or a black and white image, you need to make use of methods, right? So maybe you might be knowing that uh, if it's a color, if black and white image, we use zero and if it's a colored image, we use zero to two fifty five, right? For these numbers. So what is going to happen is at the end of the day. Each pixel is going to be. Uh, let me see. Each each cell is going to represent each pixel. You might be doing that. Image is actually a collection of pixels only, and each pixel is going to be stored like this. And this is going to be what? This is going to be matrix. And matrix is what? Matrix is a n-dimensional array only, right? So and and to work on those kind of array, what are you going to need? You are going to need NumPy. With the help of NumPy, you can change the shape of this array. Right, you can detect a particular object in the array. So all those things are possible, and that's why. Again, we'll be in a position to make sense, to make more sense about all these things once you go and once you try to do all the things, whatever I will share. Right, once you try to go and play with all these things, definitely one by one you will get it. But this is just an example because see, many people at the start they feel that why, why I should go and why I should discuss NumPy. This is the example. It's object detection in image. Similarly, there can be object detection in video. Uh, there can be a problem statement like anomaly detection. For example, there's a webcam, right, for surveillance. Now there is some unusual activity happening. So how uh, the security system should be alerted? So you should have some some application which which can help which can help you to to detect the anomalies. Anomaly is like what? Anomaly uh, anomaly is something uh, unusual. Anomaly means something unusual. So yes, in this kind of application, definitely uh, you can make use of NumPy. And NumPy, there is no limitation; it can be used most of the application. But it is just uh, one example I am trying to talk. Okay. So, <clears throat> with the expectation that you are already aware about list, I have shown you how to convert NumPy into how to convert list into array. So that was the example of one day. Let's suppose, let me create another list. L2 is equal to. You might be knowing that you can create a list inside. Array. Suppose one comma two comma three, right? This is an example of a list inside a list. Four comma five comma six. Okay. See, I did not discuss basics of Python uh, because you people told me that you are aware about that. That's why I did not discuss. Okay. And that's why I'm expecting that you people are already aware about basics of Python also. So what is this? This is an example of a list inside a list. Let me go and let me run. So this is my list. This is a list, which is an example of this is a list. Now what we want to do? We want to convert this list into array. And now just check what is going to happen is how to convert this list into array. We have a command called as np dot array. Np dot array of L2 shift enter. Now array two. If I go and if I try to check, now see array two looks like this. So This L2 we converted into array, and now it looks like this. Now try to understand. In earlier case, whatever we created, it was one dimensional array, and I told you that one dimensional array always starts with one square bracket and ends with one square bracket. But here you can see that 
this one is starting with two square brackets and ending with two square brackets. So it's a two dimensional array and it is nothing but matrix. So this is the example of a matrix. Okay. Starting with two square brackets, ending with two square brackets. This is a matrix. Remember this. So this is how you can make use of NP dot array to convert list into array. Let's suppose Let's suppose uh, take this example. See, everything is going right. So let let's try to talk about some of the built-in methods. Uh, till now, I have shown you how to convert array into uh, how to convert list into array. Let's try to talk about uh, some built-in methods. First method, built-in method is a range. Now, you might be knowing about this one, range. Range is the default function available in Python. It is a part of a basic file. Okay, so if I go and if I try to write down range of five, so what it is going to do is it is going to generate the numbers from zero to four. Obviously, if I go and if I run it now, it will not show me zero to four numbers. It will just show me zero comma four. See, if I go and if I run it, a zero comma five, but it will generate numbers from zero to four. So what range method actually does is it's a generator function. Range is a generator function. So if I want to show you what it generates, range of five, so I need to typecast it. Suppose maybe in a list or a file. Now you will be able to see zero to four. See, range of five has given me one zero one two three four. See, this is the part of a basic file. <clears throat> and I see I typecasted it in a list. That's why I am, I am getting output as a list. So here it is square bracket. Why am I talking about range? Because we want to discuss about something called as a range, which is similar to range. So you might be knowing that what range can do. See, what this range function can do is it can generate the numbers in any range you want. Suppose if I want to generate hundred numbers, so zero to ninety-nine. So it's going to generate zero to ninety-nine numbers. You can check it. Last number is going to be ninety. Why we need this? We need this to generate data. We need this to implement certain logics. Okay. Suppose I want to generate suppose 1,000 numbers. Yes, you can do that. You can generate 0 to 999. That is 1,000 numbers. Right. So you can check it. That is possible with the help of range method or range function. Now, what happens in case of range is suppose I want to generate 10 numbers. So you generate 10 numbers. 0 to 9. Now check the output is in terms of list because we typecasted it with a list. If I would have typecasted it with a tuple, you will get the result in terms of tuple. Right? See parenthesis, this parenthesis. Right? So whatever you want, you can make the list of range of this. Now see what happens is a range method accepts three arguments. So we will be making the three arguments. That is nothing but start, stop, and stay. But here we have given, we haven't given the start, we only given stop. That's why by default, range method always starts with zero. Always remember, higher number is never going to be included. That's why we call the number from zero to nine. Ten numbers zero. See, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Suppose I want to generate a sequence starting from 10, ending at 50. So let me run it. Now see. In this case, you will see that we generated these numbers 10, 11, 12. So, till what point it will go? It will go till 49 because higher number is never going to be included. Okay. So, what is this in this case? What is this 10? 10 is start. What is this 50? 50 is stop. But there is one more argument that you can give here that is suppose, uh, suppose I give to, to this is tape size. Now, see, you will get what? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So, what, what is the meaning of this? Start, stop, and step. By default, the step size is always 1. Right? Suppose if I go and if I try to write on 10, 50, 5. So, what I got? I got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So, remember what I am trying to tell you is this is the starting point, this is the stop point, and this is the step point or step size. Start, stop, step. Remember this. This is all about range method. Like this, you can generate whatever the numbers you want. Try to understand that. So, 
why I discuss range method because as we want to discuss. Why range method? So as we want to discuss something called as A range. See this A A in A range stands for array range. Here what we got? We got output in terms of this. The output of A range is always going to be in terms of array. Remember that everything can be set in single range. Suppose if I go here and if I try to write down, maybe suppose twenty comma uh, sixty comma ten. What what going to happen here? So it's going to give me numbers from 20 to 60 with the interval or a step size of 10. That means it will give me 20, 30, 40, 50. Let's see. Now see 20, 30, 40, 50. Why not 60? Because higher number of these never going to be in there. Right? I hope you people are clear. See. If I go and if I try to save it in some variable, yes, I can save that. If, if I want to show you, here are three. Here are three is what? It's a one D array. See, it's a one D array. Starting with one square bracket, ending with one square. If I go and if I try to do uh, type of this, check it. It's N D array. Right. So the point is that N P dot A range is a method available in NumPy which generates numbers and which gives you output as an array. So maybe later on we are going to do what we are going to create arrays, right? And for that we are going to require this array, array range. It is going to be very very useful. Okay. Yeah. So this is what is shown here. NP dot array range zero comma ten, NP dot array range zero comma eleven comma two. Same example. And you can tell me NP dot array range zero comma ten. It means what? Zero is the starting point and ten is the stop point. That means what am I going to get? I will get ten numbers starting with zero and ending with ten. That means zero to nine I will get. Obviously, uh, if I run, it will show me array only. So, what is the point here? We have mentioned the start, we mentioned the stop, but we did not mention step. So remember, by default, the step side is always one. That's so why if I go and if I run it, I will get ten numbers. Zero to nine. That another example which is shown. NP dot A range of zero comma eleven, right? So what it what it is going to do? It is going to get zero to ten, eleven numbers. See zero to ten. So start, stop. Yes, step size if I want to give, I can give that. Here if I give a step size, so what I will get is zero, then two, then four, then six, then eight, and then ten. Because last point we have given that eleven. Let me show. You. See zero two four six eight. So remember start, stop, and step. Okay. Now let's move forward and let's see how to create some array, some important array which you generally need. You might be knowing about identity matrix and uh, all those things, right? So how to create all those things here? See NP dot zeros. So see if I go and if I type NP dot Z and then press tab button, it will show me all the digits which are starting with Z. I want zeros. So NP dot zeros of ten if I do. What's going to happen is it will generate an array of ten zeros. Zero 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 ten times. See, let me show. You. See, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Ten zeros. And why why there is a dot here? Because by default it is um, decimal. Point. If you want to change that, you can make it up something called as D type and you can change it. So D type is equal to suppose I want to get integer. Now you will see that zero 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 there is no dot. But by default it's just that's why it is zero dot. So you can see that it has generated array of ten zeros. Something like suppose if you want array of five zeros, it is that possible. If you want array of hundred zeros, it is that possible. Now, can you people tell me, is it a one D or two D array? This one, is it one D or two D? Whatever you are able to see, is it one D or two D? One D. It's a one D array. One D. See, starting with one square bracket and ending with one square bracket. This is very very important. Huh? Later on, you are going to mention. That's fine. 
So like this, you can generate <coughs> as many number of zeros as you want. So suppose I want 10 zeros. So yes, that's possible. Similarly, if I want to generate array of 10 ones, so what I can do is np dot ones, and I can give 10 here. I can see that. See one, 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 one. Right now, my question to you people is: What if I want to generate array of 10 fives? What should I write down? Five, 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 five. I want 10 times. Can anyone tell me what should I write down? Zeros you can generate like this. Ones you can generate like this. Whatever number of ones you want, you can generate. So, what if I want 10 fives? What can I do here? I want the output like this. Can anyone tell me? At least, can anyone try it out? Uh, store matrix np dot ones mm -hmm. matrix and multiply with five to that matrix. Right. right, that is one thing. What you can do. Right. So uh, np dot ones. Suppose I want ten five. So np dot ones is going to give me this one. I can do what I can go and I can multiply because you know that you can multiply matrices with array with some numbers, right? This is what I want. Or another way, I could have done something like this np dot zero. So I want 10 five, right? So I will generate 10 zeros first and then instead of multiplication. That's also possible. Right? Similarly, you can get any array you want. That's why uh, this np dot zero and np dot ones is also going to be very really, really useful because with the help of these kind of arrays, you can generate other arrays. Can generate other data, right? I hope everyone is able to understand what is zero and ones. Similarly, there is something called as np dot i. You might be knowing that right? identity matrix, where the diagonal elements are always one. That is called an identity matrix. So with the help of np dot i e y e command, you can generate identity matrix. Suppose I want the identity matrix of uh, maybe five by five. I can go and I can generate. Can anyone tell me the one year or two year? 2D. It's a 2D array. This is the thing you need to remember about NP dot I. See, by default, it's going to be a 2D array. Starting with two square brackets, ending with two square brackets. So it's a two dimensional array. So I want identity matrix of 10 by 10. So it's a 2D array. So you can check it. All the diagonal elements are one. You might be knowing, right? What is identity matrix? You have the diagonal elements are one. You can check it here. All the diagonal elements are one. So this is how you can generate identity matrix. Now why? Why we need identity matrix? You might be knowing that we can derive other matrices with the help of identity matrix. You might be doing the simple one. A into A inverse is equal to I. Right? Matrix and its inverse always give you identity matrix. Right? So uh, many times, see, whenever we talk about machine learning, there, there is going to be some algorithm. And whenever there is going to be algorithm, there is going to be math and statistics involved. And that's why we are discussing that. Okay. Because while implementing, we are going to discuss. So, this is how you can generate uh, identity matrix. So, zeros we have seen, ones we have seen, identity matrix we have seen. Let me check whatever is uh, any other thing remaining. Okay. So, yes, with the help of uh, ones, you can create two dimensional array also. For example, if See, this is what we have said, right? np dot ones of 4. So it has given me one dimension array of 4 by. What if I want to create one dimension? I want to create two dimension array of 4 by 4. So you can write down it like this. You need to give two brackets. And see, you will get a two dimension array. This is a two dimension array. Starting with two square brackets, ending with two square brackets. It's a two dimension Same thing for zeros. Yeah, let me talk about something important that is called as mean space. Mean space is the method which is by default available in case of NumPy. See, if I go, uh, let me add some space here. See, this is again very, very important. NP dot lean space. So, lean space actually stands for linearly spaced element. Now, what do you mean by that? It means, suppose, suppose if I ask you, uh, generate maybe, uh, generate three numbers between 0 and 10, which are linearly spaced. What will be your answer? I want three numbers between 0 and 10, maybe including both. Right. I want three numbers between 0 and 
10, which are linearly spaced. Linearly spaced. Now, what do you mean by this? It means, see, if I am talking about 0 to 10, 0 is here, 10 is here. I want three linearly spaced numbers. So, obviously, one is 0, another one is 10. So, we need to find out 1, and that is 5. Why they are linearly spaced? The distance between this is 5 unit. Distance between this is 5 unit. Right? These numbers, so 0, 5, 0, 5, and 10. These are the three linearly spaced numbers between 0 and 10. Similarly, if I would ask you, tell me five numbers between 0 and 10 which are linearly spaced. So, your answer might be something like this. First is 0, then 2.5, then 5, then 7.5, and then 10. So, 0, 2.5, 5, 7.5, and 10. These are the five numbers which are linearly spaced and which are between 0 and 10. Right? So, that's what we are going to get. So, try to understand what is linearly spaced numbers. The distance between this number and the previous and the next to this is the same. For example, the distance here is 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, and so on. These numbers are called as linear space numbers. Let me give, let me give us an example. Suppose I want to generate linear space numbers between 0 and 10. How many numbers? 3 I have. This one. Now see, you will get linear, 3 linear space numbers between 0 and 10. So, this is the start point, this is the stop point, and this 3 is what? This is how many number of numbers you want between 0 and 10, which are linear space. How many numbers? You want between 0 and 10, which are linear space. Suppose uh, between 0 and 10, I want 5 numbers, which are linear space. So you can see 0, 2.5, 5, 5, 7, 5, and 10. Right? Suppose I want 100 numbers. Now this is not possible for us to calculate manually. Right? But yes, in number you will get that. And try to check. What is this? It's a one dimensional array. Similarly, you can go and you can write down for any number of numbers. 1000 numbers I have. Yes, you can get that. So, this is what you can do. So, linearly spaced, np dot linear space. So, similarly, if I go here and if I write down np dot linear space of, suppose I want 20, comma uh, 50, I want uh, 5 linearly spaced numbers between 20 and 50. Yes, I can do this. 20, 27.5, 35, 42.5, 50. Obviously, 20 and 50 is going to be there, you need to find out 3 minutes. I hope everyone is able to understand what we mean by linear space numbers. Right? <clears throat> yeah, if anyone is in between, you can just unmute yourself and you can ask it out in time or problem. N P dot I we have already talked about. Now one more important method is random. See, let me talk about random method. This is uh, all these methods we are going to need again and again. What happens is <clears throat> in case of Random method. There are three three methods you can make. See, what am I going to do is I am going to fire this command np dot random dot. So random is nothing but what random is nothing but it's a method available which can help you to generate random numbers. Obviously, it will be in arrays as they are using number. But there are three ways. So np dot random dot rand. This is the first you can make it one. Right. And then np dot random dot another another way is np dot random dot another method is rand n and one more is there that is np dot random dot rand in these are the three ways you can make use of in random in random to generate random numbers so what do you mean by this? see <coughs> When I will fire this particular command, np dot random dot rand, obviously I am going to write down some numbers and all this. But remember some of the basic points here. Rand. Rand always generates numbers from uniform distribution. Uh, you might be knowing what is uniform distribution. What do you mean by this? It means it will generate random numbers between 0 and 1 between 0 and 1. It means what? It means it will generate random numbers which are always positive. These are the things you can remember for rand. np dot random dot rand method. It will generate numbers between 0 and 1. That means always positive. That is rand. And that is called as uniform distribution. Talking about rand n. Rand n generates the numbers from 
standard normal distribution again this term might not be a new for might not be new for right standard normal distribution or we call it as gaussian distribution standard normal distribution or gaussian distribution or i can say it in another words like np dot random dot rand always generates random numbers which are centered around zero it means what it means see as it's a normal distribution that means it is going to generate a data which is good, whose distribution is going to look like this and as it's a standard distribution standard normal distribution that means it is going to be centered around zero so here it will be minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on it will be 1 2 3 and so on. so you can see that as it is centered around zero that means that means it will generate some positive as well as negative values so whenever you will make use of np dot random dot random method some values you will get as positive and some values you will get as negative values in case of rand you will get all positive values in case of rand n you will get some values as positive and some values as negative obviously in both the cases you will get in random values that is different values at every time so the distribution of that is going to look like this as it is a standard normal distribution it should be, it will look like a bell, bell shaped curve or symmetrical distribution remember okay so standard normal distribution gaussian distribution is one of the same thing and it means that the, the data is going to be centered around zero that means some positive values and some negative values and talking about rand int np dot random dot rand int it is going to generate random numbers but it is going to generate random integer numbers random integer numbers so try to remember all these things whatever i have told even if you haven't understood this till now now what i will do is i will go and i will try to implement it i'll show you practical example now. see first of all let's talk about np dot random dot rand so numpy dot random dot rand i told you what rand does rand generates the numbers from uniform distribution suppose if i add a five here run it what you you will get is you will get five numbers which are from uniform distribution and i already told you what do you mean by uniform distribution uniform distribution means the value will be between 0 and 1 so you see you can check 0.5 0.0.0.0.1 0.1, 0.1 when each and every value is between 0 and 1 Each and every value is positive, right? Np dot random dot random, and by default you can check that it's a one-dimensional. So this is the data from uniform distribution. You have one hundred values. Yes, it's possible. Again, it's a one-dimensional. So you got hundred values from uniform distribution. That is all the values positive. Okay, so that's what np dot random dot random is. Let me go and let me talk about np dot random dot random n. So np dot random dot random n. So I go to that random n. What it does? It generates the values which are centered around zero, or it gives a random value from standard normal distribution. It is also called a Gaussian distribution. That means you will get some values as positive and some values as negative. See, let me talk about this one. I, as I talked about random n initially, as I talked about random n. It is in it is in it is present here rank in random right that means every time you are going to get different different values let me show it with a very simple example see now one if I try to write down np dot random dot rand or four I have got these four values which are from uniform distribution right but if I go here and if I try to run it once again I will get positive values only but this time I will get different positive values because because the method is random random every time you will be getting different numbers see. 0.428, 0.625, 0.455, 0.62. Let me run it once again. Now see, 0.53. You can check it. Every time the values are changing. Every time the values are changing. See, I am running it again and again. Why? Because it's random. Same is going to happen in case of this remaining two methods. Right? So let's talk about rand n now. So in case of rand n, in case of rand, we have seen that every value is positive. But in case of rand n, some values will be as positive, some values will be as negative. That is standard normal distribution. Suppose 
if I run it like this, np dot random dot random five. Now see zero point one one, zero point four nine, one point one two. See negative value you got, negative value you got. So these are the values which are from standard normal distribution or Gaussian distribution or centered around zero. Suppose if I run it once again, I will get some positive, some negative values, but different values. Because random, because of the random. See, I got different values. I will explain it once again. Again, I got different. So like this, you can move each and every time you run random. Every time you will get different values, right? Suppose I want one thousand values from standard normal distribution. So yeah, that's possible. So it's a one day. Change. I want hundred values. Yes, it's possible. I want ten values. Change. Right? This is how you can make use of rand app. Now coming to rand eight. Np dot Random dot rand two, which is the method. So here, if I go and if I try to run five, now see what it has given me two. What do you mean by this? It means that see, as I am running np dot random dot rand eight, I am not giving any starting point. So by default, starting point is zero. So between zero and five, it will give me any random number. Between zero and five, it will give me any random number. Always remember, in that case, sometimes I will be able to see zero, but I will not. But it will it will not include five. That means lower value is included, but higher value is never going to be included. So see, if what 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 I need to say is, if I go and if I run this again and again, I will get I got two here, right? Sometimes I will get zero, sometimes one, two, three, four. But five, I will never get. Let me run it. See, I got three. Let me run it once again. I got two again. I got one. I got four. I got one. Maybe zero also. I will get some. Let's see. Zero I got. But five I am never going to get. So always remember, in case of branding, higher value is always excluded. It is not never. So here I got between zero and five. Here I never get. What if I want between five and ten? Yeah, that's also possible. So here I have given the starting and stop point. So now I will get any random value between five and ten. Including five, but not including ten. See, that means what? What will be the output of this one? Maybe I will get five or six or seven or eight or nine, but never I will get ten. Yeah, I got eight. I got six. I got nine. Like this, you can go on running. Now between five and ten, every time it is showing you only one value. What if I want more than one value? Yeah, that's possible. You go here and you write down three. So between five and ten, now it is going to show me three random values: five, nine, and eight. If I go any further, it will again. Again, I will get three random values: eight, eight, eight. Three random values. Anything: five, nine, and seven. Five, eight, and five. So maybe sometimes you are getting repeated value because we yeah, have the range is very very less. So if I go here, if I try to get hundred, now see, I will get three random values between five and nine. Right. So like this, you not only three, you can have hundreds of random values between five and nine. That's the solution. But every value is going to be integer. It it will be integer. Okay. So this is how you can actually make this. And if you want hundred values between five and ten, obviously there will be a lot of repetition. So this is how. You can make use of np dot random dot rand, np dot random dot rand and and np dot random dot rand it. I hope this is clear to everyone. This is going to be important and very very useful. Right? If you have any question, just let me. So <clears throat> yeah, once you get this file, uh, you can go and you can run on this. Everything is given in this note. Okay? See, rand n is explained. Rand p is explained. Okay, everything is here. Now. Let's try to talk about some of the methods which are available in case of number. Suppose, obviously, for that we are going to need some data. Now, can you people tell me how many numbers will be there in ARR if I run it? How many numbers will be there in ARR, and which are those numbers going to be? Can you people tell me? I have run this command. Np dot a range twenty five. So my question is twenty-five. Twenty-five. And which are those numbers? Zero to twenty-four. 
0 to 26, right? Because we haven't mentioned starting point. So 0 to 24. So these 25 numbers are. And yes, it's a 1D array. Okay. <clears throat> what will happen in this case? NP dot random dot random int of 0, 50, 10. Integers lying between 0 to 50. 10 integers I am going to get, which lie between 0 and 50. And again, to the random. Right? So see random number there. So this is my ARR and this is my array and ARR, random array and array. Now <clears throat> let's try to talk about some inbuilt uh, built in methods which you can apply on array. So if this is my ARR, 0 to 24, let's see a method. So you can check it, it's a 1D array, right? Now let's see a method with the help of which you can go and you can uh, change the shape of this. So, ARR dot V shape, there is something called as V shape. 5 comma 5, and then run. Now you will see that same array, which was 1D array, 1 dimensional array. This ARR earlier was 1 dimensional array. Starting with 1 square bracket, ending with 1 square bracket. Now I have converted that ARR into 2 dimensional array. Starting with 2 square bracket and ending with 2 square bracket. Right. So this is how you can change the shape of the array. So what is this 5 5? That means I want to write down this array in, in this term. 5 rows. So this first 5 shows the number of rows and the next 5 shows the number of columns. Next 5 represents number of columns. So how many rows and how many columns I wanted? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means 5 rows. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means 5 columns. So, why am I writing it down like this? Because indexing in case of Python always starts with 10. That's the first row. For first row, the index is 0. Similarly, for first column, the index is 10. And remember, dot reshape is the method which you can make use of to convert or to change the shape of the app. Right? But yes, again, this is just for temporary purpose. It, is, it, it has not changed for permanent. If I go and if I have to change array, you will see that I will get a wooden marriage. What I should have done is, I should have actually assigned this particular thing to some number. ARR underscore 2D is equal to 2 And then if I would have checked ARR underscore 2D, then I will get this one. But my ARR was added. My ARR is added actually. Okay. So this is how you can make the reshape. Now can you tell me what will happen if I do ARR dot reshape of 4 comma 5. What will happen in this case? Exactly the same. I already told you. So can anyone tell me what will happen in this case? Here are the shape of 4 comma 5. Array will be arranged in 4 rows and 5 columns. Array will be arranged in 4 rows and 5 columns. Is it going to happen? Error. Error will. Error you will get. It will not be arranged in 4 rows and 5 columns. You will get error. Yes, right here. You will get error because it's a simple thing. See how many elements I have. I have 25 elements. Now you know basic thing that total number of elements in a matrix can be represented how? When you put number of rows into number of columns. So number of rows. So total number of elements are 25. That means either I can write down it as 5 by 5 array, 5 by 5 columns, or I can write it down it as 25 by 1, or I can write it down as 1 by 25. These are the only possibilities. 4, 5, if I am trying to write it down, that means 4 into 5 is 20. And 20 and 25 elements cannot fit in this shape. And that's why you will get error. Okay? So just check it. We got error. So cannot reshape array of size 25 into 4. So that's our remember. So yes, definitely. I can go and I can try to write it down like this. Error of reshape of 25 rows and 1 column. That's possible. It's a 1DI. See, whenever I am mentioning rows and columns, it's a 1DI. See, starting with 2 square brackets, ending with 2 square brackets. Or even I could have it like this 1, 25. That's also possible. So it means 1 row and 25 columns. So it's also a 2 dimensional array. Okay. Remember. Okay. So, <clears throat> yes, that is the thing. Let me just say here. 
Okay, we shift VRC. Yes, again, we can have mean max argument mean VRC max and VRC mean. See, what happens is this is my error. Now we can apply some methods here. Error dot min, it's going to give me minimum value that is zero. Similarly, error dot max is going to give me maximum value and that is 20. Or I could have done it like this np dot min of error. One and the same. Either you run it like this, error dot min or np dot min of error is one and the same. NP dot max of error. Okay. And there is something called as NP dot ARG max. Now, what it shows, it is going to show is, it is going to show the position of the maximum element. Suppose, if this is my error, the maximum element is what? 24. What is the position of the maximum element? 0 to 24. So, the position is also same, right? So, NP dot ARG max of error. So see, it's going to show the position of the maximum. Or maybe uh, this thing I can show you the See, this is my random array. Now, if I want to show you position of the maximum element and the minimum element, so np dot arg max. Np dot arg max of r and r. So what is the maximum element here? 30, 30, 90, uh, 25, I think. So 45 is the maximum element. What is the position of the maximum element? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So my answer should be 9. Right? So the position of the maximum element is 9. And similarly, I can go and I can write out np dot a uh, arg min. That is position of the minimum element in random line. So what is the minimum element here? I think 9 is the minimum element. Right? So what is the position? I think it is 7. 7 answer I should be. So this is how you can get maximum element, minimum element, and position of the maximum element and minimum element from the array. Minimum element is 9, and maximum element from this one is 49. Okay. So the other thing remaining, shape we already see here. See, as I talked about ARR, this is my ARR. If you want to do the shift, as I told you, see how to identify or how to cross check whether it's a 1B error or 2B error. The reshape you already talked about. But if you go and if you try to make use of something called as ARR dot shape, it is going to show you the shape of your error. And if it's a 1D array, your shape is going to be something like this. That means you are not going to see number of columns. You will be able to see only number of elements. See, I have created ARR underscore 2 this one, right? Where I have 5 rows and 5 columns. So if I apply dot shape method to this one, what it is going to show me is it is going to show me the number of rows and number of columns in ARR underscore 2 and that is going to be 5 rows and 5 columns. So this first 5 represents number of rows and the second 5 represents number of columns. Okay, so just try to understand that number of rows and number of columns. So shape method shows me number of rows and number of columns. And can you can anyone tell me what is this? What type of a data structure is it? Tuple. Tuple. It's a tuple. And as you people are already aware about basics of I and you know how to replace a tuple. Suppose I want to know number of columns. What I will do is I will go here, I will index it and I will add on one. So I will be able to place this particular tuple. Because indexing starts with zero and then so I will get five. This is how I can fix number of columns in the from the sheet. Because many times we are going to require only number of rows and only number of columns. So at that time this thing is going to be very really good useful. Dodge. Yeah, D type I already talked about. Yes. This is a this is these are the basic things about numpy. Let me go to the next numpy indexing and selection. Okay. So let me numpy RS, this is involved. Now let me go and try to talk about numpy indexing and selection. So I will create an array. Now you, you are already aware about a range method now, right? So I will create an array like this. So this is what my here it's a 1D array. So let's try to talk about bracket indexing and selection. So how to index? As you people are aware about indexing of uh, list, tuples, dictionaries and all those things. 
similarly here also you can do the same thing suppose i want to fetch i want to fetch 3 so what is the index number of the 3 itself right same thing suppose uh, i want to fetch from 1 to 4 so what i can do is 1 colon i want 4 also so what i will do is 1 to 5 because you might be knowing right in basic python that whatever is there after the colon that value is never going to be included The value before that is going to be three. The value before the fifth position was four, and that's why I was going to be four. Even you might be doing over this one. They are colon colon minus one. It is simply going to be more than. That's it. But now we will learn not to change. It is going to be there as it. That colon colon minus one is what we were seeing there. Same is the thing for list also. Exactly same thing what we were. You might be doing about lists. Same thing is actually applied, and you might be knowing that AR of uh, maybe zero colon to ten colon. What is this? What is the output of this one? Zero ten to for this array. What is the output of this? Yes. Zero two four six eight. Zero two four six eight. So this is nothing but step sum. Right. So this particular notation, this notation is called as slice notation. Now, if your people are aware about this, you might be doing what is the answer for this one? If I do minus. Again, basic pattern. Zero ten minus two. What will be the answer? Yes, anyone? Again, uh, in list uh, or in strings, you must have come across this. So, so, so what are about basics of pattern? But I am making sure all these things here because. Later on, uh, in, in the applications and in the code, you might see something like this, and then there should not be any confusion, right? That's why I'm asking all the things like this. So yeah, same thing in reverse order. Okay, you may be saying same thing in reverse order. See, I am not getting same thing. I am getting empty. I am getting empty. Why? Okay, first of all, tell me. Have you have you have you worked on this kind of a thing earlier? And basics of Python. Have you worked on this kind of thing? See, this is nothing but start. This is stop, and this is step. But the step here is negative. That is minus two. And that's why you are getting it. So how to remember this? See, just just try to understand. When are you going to get empty string? When are you going to get empty string? So in this case, zero. So you can check that we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and ten. You know that if you start from left side, your indexes are like this: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, in this case, example, uh, the array numbers and the positions are same. Right. That's why whatever the index position is, that that is the number. But you might be knowing that if you go from the right side, index is like this. I hope you people are aware about this. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, minus ten, and minus eleven. Yes. These are the total numbers. Total eleven numbers we have. Now you might be knowing that if I go here and if I try to write down something like AR of minus two, so AR of minus two is what nine, nine I will get, right? Nine I am going to get. So from the right side, the indexing starts with minus sign. Now why we got empty string here? So always remember when are you going to get empty strings? So always remember. Just again. 
this is just an observation. It is not hard and fast rule. This is what we have observed to different, different examples or the projects. What happens is if you imagine this one as a scale. So if this is zero on on this side of zero, there is there is one, there is two, there is three, there is four, there is five, and so on. On this side of zero, there is minus one, there is minus two, there is minus three, there is minus four, and so on. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what what did we do in the earlier case? I have written AR of zero colon ten colon minus two instead of two. I have written minus two. Now just try to see. I am starting with zero and ending at ten. So start point is zero and ending is ten. That means <clears throat> see zero is where. Zero is here. Zero position is here and ten position is here. So direction in the original data is like this. Okay. But what is the step size we are trying to give? The step size which we are trying to give is negative. That means on this scale, the direction of the step size is this. So the observation is the observation is that if this direction and with this direction if they are opposite, you are always going to get empty. Empty end. You are always going to get empty end. Remember, in this direction, that is from source to destination or start to stop, in the original data and the direction of the tape size in on this case, if they are opposite, you are always going to get empty. Is it clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Oh, let me show you example. See, if I go. Suppose if I write down zero colon eight colon minus one. See, I am getting in this way because the in, in the original data direction is from left to right, but step size direction if you take is from right to left. Direction is up to you are never going to get it. But if it is same, you will get some. Okay. So those type of uh, questions so remember uh, remember. Okay. Uh, if you go and if you try to solve my exercise, definitely you will come across um, similar kind of questions. Maybe. Okay, yes, uh, that's why I'm telling you on the exercise also. Maybe I will try to send it to you today itself. Yes, I'm fine. Okay, so yes, and one more point. See, if this is my array, if this is my array, and if I am writing down something like suppose, can anyone tell me? What will be the answer? I will get it. What answer I will be getting? Error of hundred. Index error. Index error I will get. So index hundred is out of bounds for accessing. This is what I got. But but suppose if I go and if I write suppose maybe uh, one colon one bar. What will happen here? No error. It will run one to last element of array. So always remember the point that. The, Important point here is, in case of slice notation, you never get index out of bound error. See, we got index out of bound error in direct indexing, but if you try to mention such a number, which is not, which is such a location, which is not even present in your original data, but if you do this kind of thing in case of slice notation, see, whenever there is a colon, it is slice notation. So in slice notation, we never get index out of bound error. See, you will get that. Even if I write it down like this, here also I will not get it. Obviously, I will get empty string. I will get empty array, but no error. See, I will get empty array, but no error because fifty is not there. But if I would have written it like this without slash notation, here I will get empty sort of. So remember, the point to remember is that in slash notation you never get empty sort of. Okay, and okay. There is something called as broadcasting. There is a concept of broadcasting in NumPy. See, what happens is, if this is my error, and with the help of slice notation, if I if I try to create some another error, suppose maybe error two, error two is equal to error of. Now you know this one. Suppose uh, error of maybe three colon eight. So what is three colon eight? I will get three, four, five, six, seven. These four numbers will be assigned to what error two, right? 
ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಅಸೈನ್ಟು ಏರ್ ಆಟು ಸಿ ಫೋರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ನಾ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ಚೇಂಜ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಆಫ್ ಜೀರೋ ಕೋಲನ್ ಸೊ ಜೀರೋ ಒನ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಸೊ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಜೀರೋ ಕೋಲನ್ ಫೋರ್ ಜೀರೋ ಒನ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಸೊ ಜೀರೋ ಕೋಲನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸಪೋಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಆಫ್ ಜೀರೋ ಕೋಲನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಜೀರೋ ಒನ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಫೈವ್ ರೈಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಫೈವ್ ನಾ ಟೆಲ್ ಮೀ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಡೂ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಆಫ್ ಜೀರೋ ಕೋಲನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಇಸ್ ಇಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ನೈಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ ಗೈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏರ್ ಆರ್ ಐದು ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅಸೈನ್ ಟು ನೈಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಏರ್ ಆರ್ either element will be assigned so these elements will be replaced with 98 in error right see in error do not know what we will get is 98 98 98 but my question is is there anything which is going to happen to their original array will there be any change in error see error to be just a slice of error which is like this are you people getting my question no changes no changes right so that's the mistake we make always remember how number always actually work so there will be a change there will be a change even in original data also and that is called as process so let me show you see 989998 so there will be a change in original data also those who got my question i hope you understood the concept of process right so this is how numpa actually work so what what i should have done is if this is my error now see error is completely changed right so what i should do is i will go and i will try to get error again so what i should have done is before making any change before taking any slice of the original data right if this is my original error i should have maybe uh, i should have made a copy of this how With the help of era.copy. Now you go and you check, you make any change in this era underscore copy, it is not going to affect my original array that is era. Right? If it is affecting the original array, that is nothing but broadcast because of broadcast. So by default, NumPy supports broadcast in the fact which I just to explain. Okay? So the same thing is shown here. Now the next thing is indexing of two dimensional array. till now we were talking about indexing of one dia let's talk about to uh, indexing of two dimensional so what is this a simple thing right see this is this is nothing but what this is an example of lists in sample or just lists we have created 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 what i am doing is i am going to convert those lists into array and i am assigning it to ar underscore 2 so let me go and let me run let me show it to you how error underscore 2d actually looks like so this is my error underscore 2d now based on this let's try to discuss some the questions based on indexing so as it's a 2d array you can check it starting with two square brackets ending with two square brackets it's a two dimension array now the question based on indexing is like suppose uh, no, some of these questions we will be able to answer easily suppose 25 is there right so how can i fetch this 25 how can i fetch 25 from ar underscore 2d what should i have to page 25 i want to grab 25 1 comma 1 1 comma 1 because indexing here is going to start with 0 right so i got 25 <clears throat> this is one thing another example is what if i want to page two elements at suppose i want to page 25 30 what should i write up i think this also you are aware of okay people who have done it what should i write up 25 30 one in second bracket one comma two not in bracket you don't have to give bracket it's comma right it's comma 
So those people who are not aware about it, see, this is zero row, first row and second row. Zero column, first column and second column. I want 25. I wanted 25. So what I have done is array name and then one comma one. So this one shows row number and this one represents column number. Okay. Similarly, now what, what I want? I want 25 30. So 25 30. Check the row number. What is the row number one? That's all. What I will do is ar underscore query of I will write down the one because row number and as what is the column? Column number is one as well as two. So one comma one colon. That's it. Because one one onwards everything. First column onwards everything in terms of column. And I want complete first. So integration of both of them is going to be 20. Okay. Let me just show it to you. So here also, first number should go and second number should be one. So I can write it on like this. I want 25, 30. You see, I want 25. This is one thing. I could have written it like this also. ARR underscore 2D of first row, comma, one colon. You can have anything. Same thing. Okay. Right? So it's going to give me 25. Okay. So ARR underscore 2D of, so that's not a bracket, that's a comma. So here underscore 2D, I got this particular uh, array. Suppose I want complete row, 35, 40, 45. So you just go and write down 2, that's it. And for 0, 1, 2, you will get complete row. But remember, what will happen if you go and you try to give a comma here? So try to understand the difference between these two. Here underscore 2D of, if I give second row, see, I want second row and all the columns. That's why I will put comma here, pull here. Now you can check same answer. Right? Okay, so I will write it on like this or like this. Right? So let me write down here underscore 2D. So this is my here underscore 2D. Suppose I want I want 10, 25, 40. 10, 25, 40. I want. That means I want second column. The index number of the second column is 1. So what I will do is here underscore 2D of comma 1. Let me write it. So it's going to give me error. So I, I, what I should do here is, as I want everything from row, so colon comma one and then you are. So what is colon representing? Every row. What is one representing? The so column at the index one. Okay. See again, I will again repeat. Uh, those people, if you have any doubt, it may be any basic doubt. Please ask. If you are aware about these things. Let me know. We will directly move to that. Uh, I want everyone to understand it because when we will discuss the moment, these are the things which are going to be helpful. Even though these are basic things, but they are important. Right. So, let's just uh, try to take it that way. I also want you to understand each and everything from the basic. That's why I am starting with NumPy. That's why I have discussed. With few people only, whether I should do with basic pattern first or packages or directly with the contains which are mentioned in the syllabus. So, this is for you people only. And uh, I am starting everything from the basic. <coughs> so, here the array is very easy. This 2D array is just a three by three array. Okay? That's why we are able to see that uh, you, can, you can actually go and you can. Fetch anything, whatever you want to do. See here, for example, what if I want 10.25? So 10.25. How you can fetch it 10.25? So just here underscore 2D of. Just look at the row numbers. So row number is 0 and 1. That means what I will do is 0 colon 2. Because after colon, we know that after colon, whatever is there, that will not be taken into consideration. So row number is 0 colon 2. For the row number, we have 0 colon 2. And what is the column? I want first column. That's it. You will get 10 minutes. Right? This is what you want. Similarly, you go for any other thing. Uh, you can go and you can fetch it. Suppose, what if I want 20, 25, 35, 40? 20, 25, 35, 40. So again, ARR underscore 2D of 
20, 25, 35, 40. So just look at the rows first. So which rows I want? I want every row from one. One on one, everything I have. Oh. Which columns I want? Zero, colon, two. Because I want, I do not want third column. See, it's going to be 20, 25, 35. This is how you can do it. Right? And yes, uh, earlier I asked you one question. What if, what if you want to fetch elements like 10 and 25? Can you remember? I think I just start. Row number, column number. So what should I write down? There are only four rows. Ten, forty-five rows. What should I write down? One comma two. One comma two. Uh, in another bracket. So which bracket I should see? Comp. Square bracket only. How we are? See what is this one two? What are these one and two? Row number. Row number side. Right. Side right. so always row number. So units are written something like zero to one. This one we have uh, this question. So let me write it down. Let me just say. So he say something like this. So ten forty five hours. What do you want? Ten forty five hours. Right? Ten forty five hours. So yes, that is right. What we what we need to do is check at the row number. Zero row and second row. And that's why we have written zero comma. Okay, zero row and second row. And which column we want? First column and second row. That is the column at the index one and column at the index two. And that's why we need to write it down like this: zero row and second row. Yes. So first, so in this case the elements are not adjacent. That's why we are writing them like this: zero row and second row, and first column and second column. So in the first bracket we always add up respective row, row numbers, and the second bracket we always add up respective order numbers. Okay. Even you do not, uh, if you do not want to add up any parentheses, you can write it down in square brackets. That's okay. That's okay. I hope everyone is able to understand how to fetch the adjacent element, how to fetch the complete column, how to fetch the uh, elements which are not adjacent, or how to fetch single element, single row, single column, everything. So that is all about indexing of two-dimensional array. Right? That is the thing of indexing of two-dimensional array. And what Sriman is something called as fancy indexing. Uh, Apu, see, this is your Array. This is the array of hundred uh, G. Let me talk about fancy indexing. Let me create the array. So array two D. Array two D looks like this. Hundred G. That is ten by ten. Array two D is of ten by ten. Okay. Now array two D dot shape. What it is going to give me? Array two D dot shape. It is going to give me uh, number of rows and number of columns. Okay. If I go and if I try to show the output of this one, array to the shape is going to give me number of rows and number of columns. Ten rows and ten columns. Out of this, I want number of columns. So what we have done is array to the shape of one. So number of columns is ten. What we have done here is we assign that particular value to this particular value. The error underscore length. So value of error underscore length is going to be ten. And from that, as we want to generate another array, so I use basic Python. I have to for for some i in range of 10, error to be of i is equal to 10. That means wherever you get zero, you replace everything with zero. Wherever you get one, you get one. So I mean to say, from the arrays of zero, we created this array. In zero row, everything is zero. In first row, everything is one. In second row, everything is two and so. And just to understand the concept of fancy indexing, what fancy indexing is? If this is your error two D, what I mean to do is error two D of suppose maybe two comma four comma six comma eight something like this. So I have to go and give square brackets here. 
and then I'll be able to index it every hour. Mm. This is for the science of this. So instead of this, if you want something else, suppose if you want five, okay, that's okay possible. So whatever you do, it's not like that. It's in uh, increasing order or decreasing order. In any order, you can have. Make one comma uh, five comma two comma four. You can this. You can check it. So, sorry. Error. Error. Two D. Yeah, it should be error. 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 So this is the thing, the fancy indexing. But yeah, many times uh, you will see that normal indexing is going to go over. We are not going to do fancy indexing. But yeah, it has to go over. Know, that's why I'm just trying to talk about it. And uh, talking about this particular topic, that is the thing about selection. That means you can apply different different operations. See, let me create this array. Uh, let me show you simple operations here. If this is my error, okay. So if I go and if I try to add on the error, get them. Four. So you will see that whatever the value which satisfies this particular condition, for that you will get true. For other values, you will get false. Suppose I want the respective value. So if this is my condition, what I can do is I can go and I can index based on this particular condition. This is the simple thing you can do. So what you will get is you will get actual value. That is the thing with selection. So like this, you can apply any condition you want depending on the Logic, right? So like this, uh, it is shown here. So this is about uh, NumPy arrays. The only thing you are doing is the operations which you can perform. For example, arithmetic operations. So what do you mean by this? It means you can add arrays, multiply arrays. Multiplication is actually not possible. But uh, what what happens if the multiplication is let me tell you, it will not take more than five minutes. Okay. See, if this is your ARR, this is how it looks like. So if I go and if I try to show you the operations like ARR plus ARR, this is possible. ARR minus ARR, obviously everything will be as zero because same number must subtract the same number, zero. But if I go and if I try to write down ARR multiply multiplied by ARR, right? so you will get something like this: zero, one. So same multi same number multiplied by same number. This thing is also possible. Yeah. Okay, and there is something like this thing, star star is this. But if I go and if I try to write down something like this, suppose divided by here are divided by here. In this case, what is going to happen is there will be one there will be one operation which will be zero by zero. That means divided by zero, error it is going to come into picture. But what happens in case of array is it will not show you error. It will show you warning for that. It will not show you error. It will show you warning for that. But it will do other operations. I got the warning, right? Invalid value encounter in two divided. So for that, it has shown the result as nine because it is zero by zero. For others, it has shown the operation. It has shown the result. The same thing if I go and if I try to write down, suppose uh, maybe one divided by zero. So here also divided by zero, you are going to get. Right, so you are getting one divided by zero is missing. Still, here also it should be one. <coughs> right, so divided by zero encounter. But yes, obviously for others it should be the result. And you may be doing some operations like log. So log of zero, you know that it's in, it's uh, infinity. Log of zero. Let me check it. Let me check it. Check it. Empty dot. So, so see, log is minus infinity. Log of zero is minus infinity. So still, here also it has shown me this kind of over. No error, but for others it is calculated to that. And that's what is actually shown uh, in these number operations. Universal array functions like square root, exponentiation. This one we have seen. Sign you can find out. Sign and all those things, square root and all those things. Okay. Np dot sign of here. You can find out the sign. Let me check it. So that's all. That's all about NumPy. Uh, after this, once you get all these notes, try to go through this NumPy exercise first, and then if you have any doubt, you go and you refer to NumPy. That's good.
Okay, I will be sending you this one also as a zip file. The way I send uh, the link for the basics of Python. Definitely you can go to this. Okay, so many was any question here, any doubt? Because that's what I want to discuss today. Yeah, I made also up. So any any question, anyone, any doubt, anything? Anything you want to say? You want me to skip anything? Something? Any suggestion? Yes, no. Yes, I'm audible, friends. Oh, otherwise, I will stop. Let me know. Are you, are you people getting? Can you please let me know? Maybe the chat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 That's good then. No problem. Okay, thank you guys. And we will stop here. We will meet in the next session. Whatever I have discussed today, uh, everything I will send you as a link in the WhatsApp group. You can go and download. Okay, okay guys, I will stop here and bye. <clears throat>